Hola, mi clase. All right, we're doing the third way of solving systems, which is elimination. So I can solve systems of equations by elimination. So elimination method is the process of which solving the equation of a uh, system is by canceling unknown uh, unknowns in the system. So we are going to eliminate things. That's why it's called elimination. Okay. I just realized I was going to move on, but uh, Geo is taking his notes with me. I don't want to move to too fast, so this should definitely give you way too much time to write this down. Got it. Oh, he's got it. We're moving on. All right, so elimination method is where we are going to look for the variables that have the same coefficient but opposites. So the coefficients have to be the exact same number but opposites of each other. So if I look at x, the coefficient is 1. But if I look at this x, it's 2. They aren't even the same, nor are they opposites. And then if I look at y, the coefficient is 1. If I look at this one, it's also 1. And 1's positive, 1's negative. This is going to be where I'm going to eliminate. I always want to find where they are the same but opposites. What we're going to do is physically add these together. Okay, It's like one big addition problem like this. So I have x plus 2x. We're going to have 3x. But now I have positive 1y plus a negative 1y. They are eliminated. I got no more y's. And then I'm going to go 7 plus 2. It's going to equal 9. And look at that. One step equation. Divide by 3. And we get x equals 3. Now, to find y, you can plug it into either one. I'm going to plug it into this first one. All right, my x plus y equals 7. I don't have to multiply, so that's y. So I'm going to take my 3. I'm going to put it right here. So I'm going to get 3 plus y equals 7. We're going to solve it like a one step. Negative minus 3 for both sides. We get y equals 4. And there's our solution, 3, 4. Elimination method. All right, so let's look at the next one. So, sorry, this is bothering me. It's too close to the edge. I'm going to scoot it over. All right, so we have a coefficient of 1 and a coefficient of 2. And then we have a coefficient of 3. And we have a coefficient of 2. Nothing is the same. Nothing is opposite. So we're going to have to do something to make it the same and opposite. So, I'm going to change this one to make it its opposite and the same of its match down here. The only way to do that is to multiply everything by negative 2. So, when I distribute negative 2, this is going to become negative 2x. I'm going to then get minus 6y. And I'm going to get equals negative 14. And the reason I did that is so that now I can put this plus sign. And now my x's are going to eliminate because they are the same coefficient but opposites. So 2x plus x is ne and negative 2x is eliminate because they're opposites of each other. Then I've got 2y plus negative 6y. We will get a negative 4y. And then we have 6 plus negative 14 will get me a negative 8. Right, Gio? Yes. Okay. <laughs> then I'm going to divide by negative 4. And I'm going to get y equals positive 2 because a negative over a negative is positive. Now, again, it does not matter which of these equations you plug it into. I do like the first one just because um, I have less multiplying to do. So I'm going to go x plus 3 parentheses 2 equals 7. x plus 6 equals 7. Subtract the 6. We get x equals 1. And there's our solution. 1, 2. Eliminate.
All right, this says choose the best method for solving. What is the solution of the system of equations? So now that we've learned all three methods, we're basically saying you get to decide what method you want to use to solve these things. Okay, so we're kind of leaving it up to you. So on that note, why don't you pause and pick a method for that first one and solve it. And then pick a method for the second one and solve it. And then we'll see if your method matches my method. Ready, pause. So I know that was a long pause, I was kind of letting Geo work, but also I wanted to s just see if the book matched my method, because why not? For this first one, I would actually do substitution, and the reason why is that it's already solved for me. So I can just take my x plus 13 and plug it in. So we get 2x plus 7x plus, what's that, 21, 7, 8, 9, 91? Gio, did you do substitution method for that first one? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Did you get 91 here? Yes. For 7 times 13? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then we get 9x plus 91 equals 10. We subtract 91. We get 9x equals, what's that, negative 81? Am I good to you? Yes. Yeah, divide by 9, and we say that x equals negative 9. So now I'm going to take that and plug it in here. I get y equals negative 9 plus 13, and that means y equals 4. And so we get negative 9, 4. There it is. Now, for the second method, I would not use substitution because I don't want to solve anything. I would actually take my first equation, and I'm going to times it by negative 2. And that's because I saw right here that 2 times 2 gets me 4, but I need a negative because I need to make it its opposite. So I'm going to get negative 16x plus 4y. Right, negative times a negative. Right here. Are you following? Do you? Am I moving too fast? Okay. okay. Equals positive 16. Now that I have same coefficient but opposites, I can do that plus part and eliminate. So this is going to get me negative 11x. The y's get eliminated. And I get equals. 33? Um, I want to go with, yeah, you're right. Am I good? Yes. Right, because 6 and 7 is 13? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then we're going to divide by negative 11. We're going to get x equals negative 3. So again, plugging into these equations is really up to you on which one you want to do. It does look like we're going to have to do some work for both of them because they've all got crazy coefficients. So I don't think it really matters which one you plugged it into. Um, I'm going to plug it into the second one for funsies. So we're going to go 5 times negative 3 minus 4y equals 17. I'll get negative 15 minus 4y equals 17. We'll add 15 to both sides. I get negative 4y equals 32. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to divide by negative 4. Oh, that was the worst 4 I think I've ever drawn. That was really bad. And we get y equals negative 8. Yeah? 
All right, so then our solution, I'm going to write all the way up here, negative 3, negative 8, and I used elimination for that one. So you can kind of see that even, like, you might think, oh, this is so much, much work. Sometimes this still becomes a lot of work because look at all that. I had to multiply, and it almost looks the same amount of work. So it just really depends on how you're feeling, what's the best option, things like that. All right, this would maybe be a good time as well to pause, see if you can decide what the best method is, and then um, unpause and see what method I used and see if yours matches. Do you know what method should we use? Uh, elimination. Yes, we should use elimination because same number, opposite, it's already done for me. Ooh, that was a really bad line there. All right, 2x plus negative x gets me x. These disappear, and I get equals 5. I'm done. X don't go negative. We're on the x? Uh, yeah, I'm 5 over negative 5 over 1. But look, I'm done. That was easy. So let's plug it in. I'm going to plug it into... Let's do the, first, the second one. I'm going to go negative parentheses 5. Not that you have to put the parentheses, but I like to show that I substituted. 4y equals 3. So we can kind of just skip, right? Plus 5 on both sides. 4y equals 8. Divide by 4. y equals 2. We're done. 5, 2. So see, sometimes elimination is so fast. All right, pause again. See what you want to do. Honestly, on this one, you could use both methods and they would work out just fine. What do you want to do, Geo? Elimination. What are you going to do? I'm going to times by negative two. Negative what? Two. Yeah. Good. Geo said elimination. We're going to time this by negative two. So we're going to get negative 2x minus 4y equals negative 8. That gets us this opposite right here. So we're going to go plus and start combining. 2x plus negative 2x is nothing. Negative 5y plus negative 4y is negative 9y equals negative 9. And then we're going to divide by negative 9. And we're going to get y equals 1. I'm going to plug it into the first one this time. So I'm going to get x plus 2 times 1 equals 4. And I'll get x plus 2 equals 4 minus 2. And x equals 2. Done. an easy method, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Denise is conducting an experiment. The blue line represents the temperature over time. Celsius divided by minutes for one chemical after being placed in the freezer. The red line represents the change in temperature over time of a second chemical that has been removed from the freezer. After how many minutes will the temperature of the two chemicals be close to the same temperature? All right, so they gave you the graphs so you can estimate them, but we now also have two methods that allow us to find the exact, and that was actually one of your guys' questions in your homework was, why is substitution sometimes better than graphing? And it was because it gives you the exact answer. So I'm going to set it up for you. We're going to take our two equations. In this case, we're going to use substitution because it's going to be very difficult to find a way to make, oh, you know what, I, I lied. Oh, I'm going to show you how you can use elimination. I totally lied. You guys ready for this? Decimal x plus 25 and y equals a half x minus 15. 
Look, I can just times this by negative 1. And so I'm going to get negative y equals negative a half x plus 15. And then I can add these two. Well, y plus negative y cancels. So we're going to actually put a 0 out this time. We haven't been putting the 0, but I want to show you that it works. All right, negative 2.5x uh -huh, 2 plus a half, negative a half would get us negative 3.1x. Right, Gio? Yep. Okay. And then 25 plus 15 gets us plus 40. So now what we're going to do is we're going to solve this and get rid of all this from x. I'm going to divide, I'm going to subtract 40 from both sides. I'm going to get negative 40 equals negative 3 and 1 tenths x. And then we would divide by negative 3 and 1 tenths. So you can use elimination method even when they're both solved in slope intercept form. You do have to move some stuff around and get a little creative but it does work. So, are you dividing, Gio? He says no. No. He's like, I'm not dividing. Okay. So, it also comes out as a really hideous number, by the way, but it's really quick, at least we get a lot closer, it's 12.9 equals x. That's supposed to be a 9. It's 12.90, but super, super close. You can also tell that would be really hard for us to figure out here because these don't even go by ones. They go by two. So that would still be very hard for us to figure out here because it's not exactly going by ones either. So now we can take this and plug it into either equation. Why don't you decide which equation you want to plug it into and figure out what my y is. So I plugged it into the second one. You didn't have to. You could have totally plugged it into the first one. That was just a choice I made. But it shouldn't matter. We should basically get the same thing. And I got negative 8 and 55 hundredths my y. I will tell you when I plugged it in here, it's super close. It's negative 8 and 54 hundredths. So you can see it's super, super, super close. It just kind of depends on which one you picked. All right. So things to, to remember, you need opposite but equal, which I know that sounds weird, coefficients. Okay, opposite but technically equal, right? It needs to be 2 and negative 2, 4 and negative 4, 8 and negative 8. All right, there's your independent practice. I'm not sure why there's a less than sign right there. That's a little weird. So, I would suggest solving, trying to solve this with elimination methods, since that is what we're practicing. Um, try not to solve it with substitution. All right, until next time. Say bye, Gio. Bye.